Hello everybody, this is JC with Fix Your Six. Um, the purpose of today's video is to introduce the second generation Fix Your Six oil cooler back flush valve. And this is it. Looks very similar to the first generation Fix Your Six oil cooler back flush valve. But I did want to point out a few differences and I thought I'd start with explaining how it's made, show you the show you the components, show you what's included in the overall kit if you were to order one, how it's installed, and uh, how you utilize it, how you use this to back flush the 6.0 oil cooler. So to begin with, uh, all of these parts are aluminum, they're all CNC machined, and we have a basic <coughs> back flush valve housing threaded. We have a back flush valve, I call it valve stem with a valve seat, and this is the tapered valve seat that has this valve stem, which is threaded through the housing, as it goes from the normal up position and you thread it down, this tapered valve seat actually engages the discharge of the, on the coolant side of the oil cooler which is under this factory cap. We'll show you that a little bit later. Also included is lock nut, threaded, inch and a half, and a cap. Also hose bib threads with holes in it to tie it off and lock it in place for normal operation. Now other components in the product are two flat washers. These are all these washers are made from EPDM material, which is the same material that Ford uses in the O-ring gasket that seals the cap to the oil cooler housing. So a replacement gasket from Ford is included in the kit as well. Also there's two wrenches, there's an inch and a half wrench, custom bent, and there's a 15 sixteenths wrench. Now, if you're familiar with the first product or the first generation, there was two inch and a half, but we made a modification. So the 15 sixteenths is now included to actually loosen and tighten the valve stem as it moves up and down in the housing. So those are the components. We also include three or four zip ties. Again, once you're finished back flushing, put everything back in normal, off normal position, put one of these zip ties in, lock the cap to the housing, just kind of belt and suspenders to uh, keep the cap from loosening. Now, I've run mine for over a year. I don't have a zip tie in it, and it's never moved. These, these devices only see seven, eight pounds of pressure, 10 pounds, maybe tops normal operating pressure. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a huge amount of pressure when you compare it to what your hose sees at the house of 50, 60, 70 pounds. So those are the components. Now, how it's assembled is flat washer goes over the valve stem threads and then this assembly is threaded up through the valve the valve housing just happened to have one here already started so again here's the gasket you can see it the valve stem up through the housing so this is run all the way up and we do this here at the at the plant where it's made, so you don't have to worry about it. I just wanted to show everybody how it's actually assembled and the components. So that's threaded up through. Lock nut goes on. And the other flat washer goes in the cap. Happen to have one of those handy. The cap goes on. And in the up position, this is normal driving situation. Once this is installed on the oil cooler, you run a zip tie through. There we go. Run a zip tie, tie it off, and the cap can't turn out. And the lock nut, when it's tight, uh, keeps the valve stem from moving. Again, 
I've had mine on for more than a year and I haven't had it move in any direction ever. Okay, so that's basically the components. Um, the inch and a half wrench is used to tighten up and loosen. It's easier to do when it's installed on the housing. Tighten up and loosen the cap. And you can run these wrenches either handle up or handle down, depending on the space you have <coughs> there under the turbo. Loosen up the lock nut. Because to utilize this, and I'll show you that actually on the housing here in a second, but you'll remove the cap, remove the lock nut, and then the 15 16 wrench engages flat areas. There's four flat areas on this valve stem. Hopefully they show up on the video. But the 15 16 wrench engages those flats and you use it to go from an up position, break it free, then you run the valve down by hand. It's about three turns is all it's going to take. The, the tapered nozzle will engage the discharge on the oil cooler and then you snug it up with about another eighth turn. That's all it's going to take to get to the back flush position. So, let me kind of show you how all that works, get these parts out of the way, and go through another install uh, simulation. So, the installation, you're going to remove this cap, two bolts, and the previous video for the initial product showed this in great detail, so if you really want to see it and hear all the details on that, take a look at that video. I'm going to leave it on the website and on YouTube. So these two bolts you save because you're going to reuse those, remove the cap, remove the old gasket or leave it in place. <coughs> the new back flush valve with the gasket from Ford, install it, put a little coolant on there as I've said before, set it in place, run the two bolts down, and as we all know by now this front bolt is the easy one to get to, the back bolt is the problem child, but I've found a couple of tools in the past year that make that a little bit simpler. Unless you're doing a bench install like this, then it's all easy. But I found on Amazon a, a, a sweet little ratchet that takes bits. This is a T30 bit, and it's got just enough bend in the handle, and it is ratchet for on and off, just enough bend in the handle that you can fit it over the housing, engage that bolt, and tighten it up, or loosen it. You still have to hold your finger on the bolt to keep it from you know, turning back on you. But it makes that process of removing this back bolt significantly easier than anything else that I've seen in the past couple of years. So not to bore you with all that detail, but that's a handy wrench. It's made by Titan. I bought it on Amazon. I think it was $8. So let's see, we were installing. So we tighten up the bolts. And now to do a back flush, once it's installed, you would remove the cap, remove the lock nut, And on this one, I, I took some black magic marker and put, a, put some mark on this flat area. The other side is red. So I did that to try to show that it's only three turns from the up position to the down back flush position. So with the wrench, I'll leave it in place on the other two flats. So there's one, two, three revolutions and then just a little more to snug it up and that's all it takes because again this valve this tapered valve nozzle is machined aluminum the discharge on the oil cooler is stainless so when the aluminum engages and tighten that tightens up against that stainless the aluminum is going to 
or the stainless is going to bite into the aluminum, that's what generates your seal. So you don't want to over torque it because then you might run the risk of stripping out some thread. So again, it only takes three turns to go from all the way up normal position to all the way down back plus position. And you can try, but you just can't turn it much more than that. And you don't need to because the test I've done is in that position, you're going to get 99% of the water for back flushing is going to go into the back flush valve and out the discharge or out the intake inlet of your oil cooler. Um, a few other tips that might help is these are the hose fittings. And again, I recommend a 90 and then a 45. You can use plastic if they're a little bit cheaper because it's not a permanent install. So that installs here. And also suggest to use these winged fittings. It's just easier to manipulate uh, in place in the truck. So that's tightened up. And then your hose gets attached and pistol grip or whatever you're gonna use to add the water. You back flush the heck out of it, see how much debris comes out, what all you've what all you've gotten rid of and run it and see what your deltas are. So uh, so far we've had really great feedback, really great success on the website. There's a lot of uh, reviews that people have left over the past year. I'm very proud of this device, very happy with the results I've had on my truck and the results that other people have had as well. So again, this is JC, uh, Picture 6 oil cooler back flush valve for the 6L. Take a look at the website. I guess you're already on the website. So if you have any questions, email me. There's a number there you can call. And uh, wish you the best. Good luck.